I know that the spirit of the Kadosh Elohim is in you and no secret troubles you. No secret troubles you. Because he knows that he can get the revelation of the secret if the Almighty's will decides for him to receive that. So that's why Nebuchadnezzar said that. Explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my, of my head while on my bed. I was looking and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth. This is so important for many reasons. Uh, a lot of people will say that this was a dream and dreams have no... Um, like they're senseless kind of like that's what they think even though dreams can be a little bit crazy and things that are not normal may happen in dreams um the mind uses reality to make the dream so that's why we think that it is reality while we are dreaming in most cases so while we are dreaming it seems to be reality and what doesn't make sense are things that like for instance like we are in one place in a moment and then all of a sudden we are in a different place or the watch doesn't have the hour and we don't think anything of it or uh, we may be talking to somebody and all of a sudden that somebody is somebody else stuff like that may happen because it is using imagination but imagination is based on reality so that's what I want to make clear although the reality may change during a dream still is a reflection of reality as we experience, in, uh, experience it when we are uh, awake. So, with that said, dreams are a reflection of reality. And here we see that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of all the earth, has a dream, a dream in which there is a tree in the middle of all the earth. In the middle of the earth first of all if the earth is a ball what is the middle it has no middle or the middle will be uh, the the center of the ball which they say is bas basically inaccessible and is a um, a core of fire heat lava and pretty much uh, not accessible at all not really seen because they have tried to go uh, to make a hole on the crust of the earth and they haven't been able to go above 80 um, kilometers under so they don't know really they just put it in the textbooks as if it were a fact yet they haven't seen it they haven't proven that that is the case because they haven't been able to go and actually test it like science says that things should be tested and seen and experimented with and all of that so they haven't been able to go down for more than 80 kilometers and other than that uh, my my point is that if a if the earth is, is a ball the center is right in the middle and everybody will be living on the surface, as they say, right? However, here is saying there was a tree in the middle of the earth. I'm going to read it again. I was looking and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth. So, all the people may imagine it like the ball right here and the tree right here. Yet, um, that wouldn't be the middle, like I said. It would be the core, but anyways. I'm just trying to show this uh, so that you guys understand that the way they have told us that the earth is makes no sense when we put it uh, next to the pages of scriptures. So that's why we must choose. And I have no problem with people choosing one or the other. I understand why they would choose the other. But we have to choose. We cannot say that scriptures are true and then say that scientists are telling us the truth because one of the two is wrong then and we must choose which one is wrong and that is my point we cannot just say that they are both right we just not understanding how to read scriptures that is 
not the way of seeing things or say that scripture must be taken as poetic and metaphor and that's it and that's why it doesn't make sense with what scientists are saying we must choose one or the other because they are saying different things regarding the place where we live and when we look at reality and test it we actually see that scriptures are right but people don't want to do that people just want to believe one or the other and since scriptures are old they rather believe scientists because they don't want to be looked upon like they are crazy or la being laughed at because of what they believe so we must choose one or the other we cannot say that they go together as most christian pastors say most of them will believe in evolution will believe in the big bang will believe in um well like i'm saying the ball the globe and many other things that are not in scriptures if we read scriptures carefully we are told that the world is different so the question is do we believe the creator or do we believe the supposed scientist who should we believe obviously the creator but when people rather believe the scientist is because they don't believe that there is a creator or they don't believe that the creator actually gave the scriptures or many other things but it's a lack of faith lack of um well yeah pretty much faith but it goes on to many other things so also scripture says that cursed is the man who trusts in a man so by trusting in scientists only we are trusting men we should at least test things like for instance i have never seen water being able to stick to a ball under it or above it really because it just <laughs> goes down yet in a sphere as a world there is no up there is no down and well that's a story for another day but i want to say all of that because of what we are reading right here a tree in the midst of the earth so it cannot be in the core because there are no trees there as they say that the core is instead the earth would have to be seen as a plane in which there is a middle like a table in which there is a middle and that that's where the tree would be so in the midst of the earth he saw a tree so i was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great the tree grew and became strong its height reached to the heavens to the heavens so just like we see in the story of babel they wanted to create a tower that would reach the heavens and most people may read that and say they're crazy they're stupid how can they think they would do such a thing yet we see later on that yahweh goes down to see what they are doing and then decides to change their languages because they would be able to accomplish it unless he did that so yahweh had to stop them because they were going to be able to reach the heavens if not if it were impossible for men to reach the heavens through a tower then why would he change the name the, the languages there would be no point in doing that he would have just sat down and waited for them to fall and see their faces of astonishment when they would enter a space with no gravity and ended up floating and then exploding or whatever because of no air so if yahweh stopped them is because they were going to be able to do it as we see in the actual chapter in in spanish we're going to read it this shabbat actually so uh interesting how this chapter connects with the tower of babel and that's what we're reading this shabbat so the tree represents and i'm going to start interpreting a little bit even though daniel will say later the tree is pretty much nebuchadnezzar his kingdom which was in the middle of the earth in the sense of well uh, they say that israel is the is the middle and is very close to uh this part of land which extended for a lot a lot of uh, well yeah a lot of places a lot of nations that he came to conquer and then he will rule them from the middle but 
the point is that as the kingdom of Babylon was the main one ruling over all the earth is as if it were right in the middle the center the most important part so there was a tree in the center that grew all the way to the heavens so that represents that his kingdom grew to the second heaven in the sense that started um, one could say influencing the angels and that is interesting because that is something that will happen with the last kingdom so this chapter can be taken to understand what the last kingdom uh, kind of will be so just like in Babel there was a tower that reached the heavens now the kingdom of Babylon grew so much in power and honor that it reached the heavens so there are several ways of reaching the heavens and that's why they are trying nowadays with uh, rockets and other things and that's why also they're trying with the um, LHC the the one in well CERN within uh, where they are looking for the God particle through which they would be able to travel whether in time or in uh, well within dimensions different dimensions that's what they are trying to uh, do or test so so I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great the tree grew and became strong its height reached to the heavens reached to the heavens so there's a there's a heavens to reach if the heavens were infinite as they say of space which now they're saying that they're not infinite and that they're actually um, they have walls and all of that but anyways uh, they make up things all of the time according to what people start to find out but the point is that they say the space is huge huge so huge so how could a tree on a ball be able to reach reach the heavens there's nothing to reach there according to what they say but if we accept what scriptures say then yeah you can reach the firmament which is like if you were to plant a tree in a house it would eventually reach the ceiling because every house if it is going to work like it should it should have a ceiling a roof that roof of the creation which is a house is the firmament so that's what it reached in the dream the tree grew and became strong its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth that is impossible according to scientists and I repeat some would say well that is a dream that's why it could happen no because this that happened here could happen in creation according to the rest of scriptures when we read all of scriptures we see that this is possible in the reality that Yahweh created for men to inhabit because it was possible with the Tower of Babel and that was not a dream so it could be seen to the ends of all the earth so no matter where people were on the earth even to the ends of it they would be able to see the tower i mean the tree they would be able to see the tree that was right in the midst however if the tree no matter how big it were were to ha uh, were to be on the top of a ball there is no way that people under the ball on the south hemisphere would be able to see the tree no matter how tall it may be people on the south hemisphere wouldn't be able to see that tree so that in the reality that scientists have been selling to the world for a while since the philosophers um, is obviously not possible according to that world that's why lucifer in masonry is called the architect of the universe because lucifer through the well through philosophy or some philosophers and then other people of greece and then rome and then nowadays which is pretty much a mix of greece and rome because of the doctrines i mean and even belief systems um they ended up teaching everybody and putting in textbook textbooks 
the world that Lucifer taught them to teach everybody. That's why he's called the architect of the universe, because he created the universe in which people are living according to their beliefs. So it is amazing how that works, because one person, I mean, two people can be in the same space, yet they may be living in a different world according to what they believe. And if we take that to spirituality or scriptures, it is interesting for atheists, for instance, the way they live, the way they think, that makes their reality that which they believe it is, a reality without a mighty one. Of course, the Almighty gives them bread and life and and a family and love and all of that because Yahweh is good and Yahweh is the one who knows what will happen so Yahweh knows that in the other life those people will be not part of what he prepared for the world so since those people are not going to take part in that because of their own volition then Yahweh gives them in this world something good to enjoy so um, I'll continue and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. So the whole earth could see the tree. Yet if it were a ball, it's impossible. So, it, uh, its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, the nations which are as beasts, found shade under it, found protection under the kingdom of Babel when they accepted its rulership. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches. So the angels of the second heaven would find habitation in this reality through that kingdom. This is important because the kingdom pretty much ends up deciding who the people were well in pagan kingdoms who they will worship so now they are preparing a kingdom in which they will worship whoever they want as long as they accept one which will be the beast and its image which will be the false messiah so it's interesting what i just said because it is as for instance with the homosexuals they have the LGBTQ and a bunch of other letters that they will be adding according to their identities, which they say, some say, uh, they put a number, some uh, say that there are like 94 identities already. But anyways, they will keep growing uh, in falsehood. So they, they say they accept and uh, they are so many identities and all of that, but they don't accept the true identity, which is heterosexual. That is the true identity. All of the other ones are false, yet they only accept those. But regarding the heterosexuals, they regard them as weird, crazy, evil, mean, hateful, and a bunch of other things. So it, the same thing with the true uh, Elohim. They hate the true Elohim, but they accept all falsehood, Buddha, Buddha, Jesus and this and that and that and that and so they claim that they accept all beliefs they accept all systems they accept everything except for the truth because they hate that as being hateful because it's the only one that tells them that they are wrong so just like it happens in homosexuality is happening in the religions they are using the same idea and that's why people are becoming pretty much spiritually homosexuals that's why scripture talks a lot about uh, well romans 1 if you want to read that relation that there is between idolatry and homosexuality and the wine of the fornication of the whore of babylon for instance which makes people end up doing spiritually things that are completely wrong that are represented by the wrong things that people do sexually so that's why the wine of the fornication represents an idolatry because just like people end up having spiritual sex with different entities, some even with themselves because they see themselves as gods, 
just like one man having sex with another man is in love with himself with his own form sex so um everything that i'm saying is just to point to the fact that they are putting the whole world with the idea of diversity with the idea of tolerance and acceptance under falsehood while hating the truth claiming that all gods can be worshipped and they are all nice and good and they all lead to the one that's what they say but that one is represented by nebuchadnezzar by lucifer is lucifer the one that tells them yeah you can worship whoever you want as long as you end up worshiping him i don't even want to say <laughs> well i don't like to put myself in those words so that's why i said as people worship him so through buddha they may be worshiping an angel but that angel at the end serves lucifer so by worshiping buddha they are worshiping lucifer by worshiping krishna they're worshiping lucifer by worshiping a different angel they're worshiping lucifer so it's the same thing by being homosexual by being a lesbian bisexual transsexual pansexual is all abomination according to scriptures so so the beast of the field found shade under it the birds of the heavens dwelt in the in its branches so the angels found a dwelling place through this kingdom just like the fallen angels are found are finding dwelling places in the churches and synagogues and many other places where people worship because they are not worshiping the true elohim they are worshiping an entity whether a demon fallen angel or evil spirit and all flesh was fed from it all flesh was fed from it i saw in the visions of my head while on my bed and there was a watcher a set apart one coming down from heaven he cried aloud and said thus um here also could be said he cried yeah he cried with strength which is pretty close to what we see in revelation about a uh, malach mikael who cries aloud also and that is because he represents the voice of Yah he is the voice of Yahweh just like Yahushua is the word of Yahweh word and voice first and last so this seems to be Mikael appearing to destroy Babel just like it would happen at the end times and we see in the book of Revelation I saw in the visions of my head while on my head and there was a watcher a set apart one coming down from heaven he cried aloud and said thus chop down the tree and cut off its branches so he gave an order to cut babylon to destroy babel to destroy the confusion just like when yahushua appeared on earth and john the baptist yahuhanan the immerser he was uh, doing his ministry he said the axe is already at the roots of the tree and uh, whatever tree does not give fruit will be cut off and thrown in the fire. So, John the Baptist came preparing the way for Yahushua. John, well, Yahuhanan, he was expecting a little bit more because he was expecting pretty much the first and last as one, fulfilling everything. Yet, Yahushua appeared only as the first. And then there would be 2,000 years until the end. So that's why there was a little bit of confusion in the head of Yahuhanan as we see in scriptures and there, there are reasons for it which we'll see eventually when we read those parts so Yahuhanan was ready for Rome to be destroyed and everybody who were not actually fulfilling the will of Yahweh to be thrown in the fire and even though that which he said is true and will be fulfilled and that is the reason why it had to be written that wasn't going to happen at that specific time. My point is that, like I said in the book of Revelation, is uh, similar to what we are reading here. Mikael will come down like the voice of Yahweh to announce, like the shofar, the great trumpet, to announce that Satan is falling, to announce that Babylon, the great whore, the false doctrine, will be destroyed. So, he said, chop down the tree and cut off its branches 
that's where the angels were. The birds were on the branches, finding a home. We see, uh, well, in the New Testament, Yahushua tells us of a parable in which there was a man, well, a rich man pretty much who had a servant, and that servant started acting uh, bad, like Lucifer, is a representation of Lucifer, and he was fired. That servant was fired. So he went around to the other servants and started doing changes to whatever they owed the rich men. So through those changes, they ended up pretty much serving him and giving him a place, the bad servant. And I'm paraphrasing, I'm just saying the story in a nutshell so that I may explain what is here. So that bad servant went to other people who owed the man money and he changed the books so that they would receive him in their places. And that's why scripture in Revelation 12 says that there is a time when Lucifer will be thrown out of heaven because there won't be any place for him any longer. And he will come down with a third of the angels, those whom he pretty much uh, convinced to rib to become rebellious against the Most High. So the fact that he says chop down the tree and cut up cut off its branches is pretty much like saying destroy all the houses, all the doctrines, all the churches, all the persons that have become dwelling places for the angels. Pretty much those who worship those angels become their dwelling places. So by destroying those doctrines, those churches, those temples, and those nations that worship uh, fallen angels, their branches will come down. Also is what we see in the book of Haggai where it says that Yahweh this time, unlike the time of Noah in which he only uh, shook the earth, this time, as Haggai says, and then Paul in the New Testament, it is written that this time Yahweh will shake the heavens and the earth. What Yahweh did in the time of Noah, that he destroyed the whole earth, now he will do in the earth and the heavens. That's why we are seeing, uh, seeing here a prophecy of that moment in which the branches, the second heaven, will be cut off so that those angels end up falling once and for all. In Revelation 12. I hope that is understood. If not, please uh, make your questions and I will see them as soon as we finish with the chapter. So, I saw in the visions of my head while on my bed and there was a watcher, a set apart one coming down from heaven. He cried out loud and said thus, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it. So let the nations get out from under its rule. Let the nations uh, become, um, well, free for a moment because then they would be under the Persians. However, that part is not shown here because, I once again, I repeat, when it comes to the historical sense of this letter, the Persians came and took over. Pretty much those were the, uh, the, the people that Yahweh used to cut off the tree. But Persia represents the chosen few. That's why Persia means splendid. The chosen few are the splendid ones that Yahweh chose for the end times to be transformed. So, we can take this as Yahweh sending the last as the axe. Because the last comes as the iron horn mentioned in uh, Micah, the prophet Micah. And... Um, also, in Isaiah 63, we see that Yahweh comes as a Roman, dressed as Edom. And also, we see Yaakov dressed as his, his brother, Esau, to go and get the, the blessing. So, we see Yaakov dressing as Esau, who, become, who became Edom. And Yahweh said that he would be dressed as an Edomite in the end times. That's why Yahushua said that he would come as a thief in the night. And many other things that we see in scriptures. The point here is that the last is coming as a Roman. And according to the statue seen by Daniel in chapter 2, Rome was represented by iron. So iron is Rome. And iron was the metal or is the metal used to make 
axis so the axe that cuts the tree is the last who comes as a Roman is the last who come as the iron horn and the axe needs a handle made with wood so the axe has iron and wood that is the last and the first Yahushua came as the first to die on a tree on a cross made of wood so that wood that sacrifice is what would help or give the strength to the iron to be able to cut Babylon from the earth its kingship so when the when the first came he pretty much left the handle of the axe through his sacrifice when the last comes he is the head of the axe because he comes as a Roman so when the iron and the wood mix we have the axe so the last through the strength given by Yahushua because we can do all things through Yahushua who strengthens us so when the last becomes one with Yahushua by accepting him as sovereign so when Yahushua gives him the spirit that's when he becomes the axe so he can cut the tree of Babylon because instead of the tree of Yahweh growing from the earth like what we see in Isaiah 11 that the tree was growing and they cut it so then at the end a branch will come out of the stem of Yeshai that branch is the last because when Yahushua came he came as the seed the seed started growing and becoming a tree but the apostasy came through Rome which is iron like an axe and cut the tree that Yahweh was forming so then when Rome cut the real tree a different tree started growing that of the apostasy that of the church so it started growing and growing and growing and that is the great whore of Babylon that we see nowadays the false doctrine in which so many false angels are being worshipped as idols who are called saints and they are in all of those branches and people are going under those branches to worship those angels and demons and false entities um, evil spirits through those I idols so that's why the last has to come and use the axe the iron get a hold of Yahushua his sacrifice represented by the wood and cut the tree which is the great whore of Babylon which will fall and then the angels will fall with it I hope all of that is clear it's very important what is being represented here and how the last is like the angel Mikael who when he spoke the axe manifested and cut the tree so the Malach is the axe once the Malach becomes a man and accepts Yahushua then the handle is on the head and it can be uh, used for cutting the tree so chop down the tree and cut off its branches strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit let the bees get out of un from under it and the birds from its branches nevertheless leave the stump and roots in the earth leave the stump and roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze <laughs> see how interesting which I just mentioned I, I mentioned a while back how the mix of Roman doctrine and the Greek doctrine became the apostasy of nowadays Rome is represented by iron Greece by bronze so it says here bound with a band of iron and bronze that's what makes the great whore of Babylon the doctrine of nowadays is a mix of iron and bronze here is also uh, has to do with the fact that the Empire of Greece, uh, Greece and then Rome would appear and also the stump and its roots would be left on the earth like Daniel says that some nations will be uh, left during the millennium and then they will gather and come against Israel during the end of the millennium when Gog uh, well when Lucifer will fool them again so they will come as Gog and Magog and other reasons but I'm sure we'll see in a little bit so bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field 
let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts here look how we said leave the stump and roots in the earth and then it starts talking about it as if it were a person so it is talking about nebuchadnezzar like i said the tree was nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom because the king represents his own kingdom that's why the beast of the book of revelation is both the kingdom and the person the new world order and the world leader in daniel we uh, we see it separate in the book of daniel we see the beast and the little horn so the beast is the government uh, that will rule over the world and the little horn that the beast has is the leader just that uh, just like i said about the last who is called an iron horn he is a horn the horn of jerusalem but he's made of iron that's why he's the world leader that yahweh will place on this world at the end of everything because he's the horn and well many other reasons that i have said before so let him graze with the beasts and the grass of the earth let his heart be changed from that of a man let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him let seven times pass over him it could be interpreted also as seven years seven years like the last week of daniel seven years which represent the last seven years in which the end times will happen a lot of people think that the that the end the apocalypse will happen in a day they think that everything will blow up and that's it and even though that is true individually for every person the end of their life is pretty much the end of the world however it happens when that person dies is becoming the end of his or her world because every head is a world so in a way it's true the end of the world for each person is one day but for the world it will be seven years it will happen in a matter of seven years during the seals a fourth of the population of the world will die so to them will only happen in a matter of three years i mean the seals during the trumpets which will happen in pretty much a year uh, or even less actually less than a year um the trumpets in, in that time a third of the population will die so from the population that there is right now a fourth will die during the seals then from whatever is left a third will die and then from what is left all will be punished only a few that are pretty much not counted because there will be so few that the earth will seem empty by the end of the last seven plagues so i said all that because of what it says here just a second let his heart be changed from that of a man so he's talking about nebuchadnezzar who was the tree who would be cut down humiliated for him to become humble so yahweh allowed for his heart to become that of a beast which is kind of like what happened to pharaoh in the sense of conscious like his heart became hard as a stone so he didn't believe anything that moshe said or did that's why he went through 10 plagues now instead of his heart turning to stone or yahweh hardening the heart of the pharaoh in this case he switched the mind of nebuchadnezzar the king into that of a beast basically he took away certain capacities that we have as humans so that he would begin begin acting like a beast an animal which is huge it's important because the world leader of the end times is called a beast so that means that nebuchadnezzar by doing what he did in the previous chapter of making a statue an image of himself he ended up becoming a beast because he lost all um judgment free will 
like the one that humans have, which is greater than anything else, because there is a an illusion or a reflection of that free will that the angels have. That's why they rebelled against the Most High. So, let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast. So he represents the beast, the world leader, who will become uh, the beast of Revelation. And even though, I want to make clear, even though what we're about to read shows how beastly he became, that is not how the beast will be. This is showing that Nebuchadnezzar fell very low because of his um, his pride. And that is to show, as an example, prophetical reflection, how the world leader of the end times called the beast will manifest and how he will be humiliated but afterwards. So people will see him as a human. They will see him as... They would think he is one of the smartest or the smartest human ever. They would think that he is charismatic. They would think that he is powerful, uh, wise, and other things. But the fact that that person won't believe in the Most High, Yahweh, or won't subject, uh, like he won't submit to Yahweh, is because in his heart he will be a beast. He will be an animal because that's what makes us different uh, different from the animals among other things is the fact that we can have a relationship with the most high we ha we can have intimacy with the most high through prayer through understanding through logic through intelligence through fulfilling commandments and other things so a person who disregards all of that is pretty much acting like a beast and that is the reason why they are disregarding all of that because they want to do things that animals do. And when we follow the Almighty, He doesn't allow us to act like animals. So, um, I just wanted to make that clear. This represents the world leader, although people will see the world leader as the greatest human ever. Which is interesting because in the world they believe in evolution. So they are now thinking that several things are part of evolution. There are people who think that homosexuality is part of evolution, which makes no sense because it goes against what supposedly evolution is. Um, so that shows how backwards everything in the world is. Everything is upside down and backwards, like I say in one of my songs. So everything is all wrong. They call good evil and evil good. They call truth a lie and they call lies absolute truths after they say that the absolute truth does not exist yet to them whatever they believe is absolutely true so that shows also a lot of pride and ego so let his heart be changed from that of a man let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him so that shows that the end times will happen in seven years in which the beast will gain power because the beast will begin pretty much during the first year of the last seven during the second seal but he will receive authority close to the fifth seal and that will extend all the way to the fifth bowl of wrath in which he will lose his power 